Thank you uh, for this introduction. You would expect that there is an off-the-shelf solution for this kind of patients after subtotal meniscectomy and pain, but there is not. And with this artificial meniscus prosthesis, prosthesis we try to find one. We developed a trampoline medial meniscus prosthesis and the aim of this prosthesis is to be an allograft uh, alternative. It's made for the medial compartment. Uh, it's an anatomical meniscus implant and it resembles also the function of the native meniscus. And it's placed by means of an arthroscopic procedure. But the most important goal, of course, is to reduce the pain in the patient after subtotal meniscectomy. But what is the trampoline? It's a polymer meniscus made of polycarbonate urethane. It's flexible, although not as flexible as the native meniscus. It's fixed on the tibia plateau only with screws, so not with sutures. And it comes with surgical instruments that are specifically designed for this procedure. In this study, the indication for the trampoline meniscus prosthesis were patients in between 30 and 65 years old, history of partial or total meniscectomy, and obviously pain after that procedure. Joint space narrowing was restricted and it was a straight leg with no bare bone on atroscopy. The meniscus prosthesis comes in five sizes, five for the left knee and five for the right knee. We also developed a pre-planning tool. We segmented all the MRI scans of the patients and made a 3D model so that we could fit different sizes of the implant on the tibia and also decide where the location of the drill hole should be to get a perfect fitting. We got approval from the ethical committee to do 18 patients and the primary endpoint of this study was pain and the secondary safety and we started two years ago. We eventually operated on five patients, four women, one man, with a median age of 47 and a median BMI of 24 and below you see the outer bridge scores. This is an animation of the procedure. You see there's one screw in the back that comes from the anteromedial part of the tibia to the posteromedial part of the tibia. And here you see the anterior screw that comes through the arthrotomy in the anterior location of the meniscus horn. And then the meniscus is placed on top of that screw and clicked on it. So no sutures to the capsule of the knee joint. These are pictures of the x-rays and the MRIs and then we come to the results. The original pain in the patients was gone, at least that was what the patients told us. However, the Q score did not improve and that was because the knees remained rather stiff, both in flexion and in extension, also because of the swelling in the knee joint. Four implants were explanted because of that reason and two appeared to be broken. One patient is still in the study. Nevertheless, the surgical technique seemed feasible and reproducible and also safe. Here you see some examples of the broken implants. In the first picture you see fatigue tear in the posterior horn. In the second picture there's a tear in the screw eyelet. And in the third picture you see some wear against bare bone and as a result a small parrot beak. But the surprising part was that during the second look arthroscopy to remove the implant there was no extra cartilage damage compared to the index surgery. So the broken implants did not cause any extra damage. So in conclusion the patients were not satisfied. The coos did not improve, the implant is too stiff and the fixation method seemed too rigid. And what we again learned is that we should avoid contact with bare bone. So 
it seems like the results were rather disappointing. However, we now know that we need a more flexible implant and we need a more flexible fixation. And that's something we could not predict earlier from our preclinical tests. But now we can also approve our preclinical tests because now we have some feedback from our clinical situation. So we learn a lot. So we are actually designing now the new implant with the new requirements. And we hope to start the next study in the end of this year. Thank you for your attention.